Okay, guys, we are going to wrap up Chapter 9 today, and uh, today's Wednesday. So happy Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed the goofy little video I posted. Um, just trying to put a smile on your face. So, um, and did the little murder mystery thing. So I'm sitting outside just because I need some fresh air, man. So I hope you guys are getting outside and getting some fresh air, too. Um, so you might hear dogs barking or whatever, but it's all good. <clears throat> so... Anyway, before I forget to tell you, um, Friday's Good Friday, which you probably already know that, but it's typically a school holiday. I mean, it is a school holiday, so it already was on the calendar as a no school day, so there won't be anything posted for Friday. The stuff posted today is Wednesday, Thursday, so if you don't do it today, you have tomorrow to do it. Um, and then just because we all need a break after three long weeks of three or the first three weeks of learning how to do school online um and everyone's been working so hard that we're doing no uh, we're taking monday off too kind of calling it easter monday so we can enjoy a four-day weekend so woohoo so anything that is assigned today um won't be due till next um well no i take that back Anything assigned today, you should do today because it's just notes that we would have done while we were in class. You should do them today or tomorrow, Thursday, because those are normal school days. I am going to schedule some Zoom calls for Thursday afternoon and Tuesday afternoon um, to review all of this Chapter 9 stuff. So I will post them in the stream and i will send out a remind as well but this is your warning to be looking for those if you want to go over all the different notes you took um and um because wednesday morning i'll do a quick review video and then you'll take a uh a test on wednesday over over the um toxicology stuff so thursday or tuesday which are school days will be afternoon Zoom meetings for you to ask questions and get clarification and make sure all your answers are good. Uh, Cause I've just pretty much been doing completion grades and giving you guys a little bit of feedback um, as I looked through everybody's typed up questions. So some of you still haven't done all your stuff. I don't know what to tell you. If you're struggling, reach out, let me know. I'm like um, this is not difficult stuff. Um, you guys should be able to answer these simple questions. Um, grades were due today for teachers so see what's in the grade book some of you have some zeros which is really silly because you've got plenty of time on your hands to learn this material and answer some questions so if you're really struggling let me know um and we'll figure it out so i started with this verse where i ended on monday um just because at this point we've talked about a lot of um, different things with related to uh, forensic toxicology and hopefully everybody did that little interactive activity i know most of you were on there uh, i was getting a lot of texts um tuesday afternoon which is great um trying to help everybody get on there and do it you can always do more levels i really just wanted you guys to do the toxicology one since that's the content that we're looking at right now but it's actually kind of a fun activity a uh, great way to learn it hands-on and understand what really goes on in the lab so everything we've been talking about have been just kind of like a big overall picture of like drugs what are what is classified as drugs how does that relate to, to uh, forensics and typically with forensics it's going to be post-mortem it's usually going to be bodies people have died and they're trying to figure out what caused it so forensic toxicology is usually looking at what substances did this person ingest or be exposed to or be injected with whatever that caused their death you know what happened so in light of all of that i put these verses up on monday because i was like you know we as you know humans um have the ability to expose we expose ourselves a lot to drugs everything from simple as like tylenol or advil for headaches to antibiotics when we're sick to pain pills if we've had surgery or you know um, all these different antiviral medications that people are trying to do to help fight this COVID-19 so we do intentionally take a lot of things um, to treat illnesses but there's also a lot of misuse of drugs in our culture and possibly even with some of you I don't know I hope not but I'm not stupid enough to think that there's no one in Grace Prep that ever uses an illegal substance. I've been around a while and uh, have had my own kids go through Grace Prep, so I know it's there. I'm not stupid. I pray you guys are not involved in 
in that kind of stuff. I know I shared some personal stories in some of the other videos, but it's, I could tell you so many stories and this is when I wish we were together. So we can, I'm happy to answer any questions or tell you any other stories you might want to hear when we do our zoom calls. But, um, all that to say, I want, I pray that you guys will be wise about the things that you put in your body. As we look at all those accidental overdoses, um, of famous people and I have accidental overdose, um, um, situations in my family, I can, probably named five or six in my family that have between cousins and distant cousins and uncles and stepsons and ex-husbands and not my ex-husband, my sister's ex-husband, um, that have experienced accidental overdoses. It's, it's all over the place. So but, well, usually when we're in class and we're talking about that, I encourage my students, don't use your body as a chemistry experiment. Okay. Don't use your body as a chemistry experiment chemistry experiment. Don't put stuff in your body thinking I'm going to be fine because you're, you may not and you risk your life. Please don't do that. So there's a reason why God gives us these verses. It's because it's for our own good. It's to keep us alive. And um, so I'm going to move on past these verses here. And um, this is one of my favorite activities. <laughs> And I'm super bummed we can't do it together, but I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to link it um, to this assignment. Um, I tried to fix the audio, so I hopefully it'll work. Um, I did a little test run and it worked okay. There's a little bit of an echo, but you could hear it. So uh, I'm going to exit out of this really quick and I'm going to go to where, oh, wait. Um, wait, I want this. No, no, no. Where's, oh, shoot. How do I get to my, oh wait, now I want to go to this. Okay. Um, I'm going to go, where is it? Here it is. Okay. So it's this, uh, I'm going to put a, a link to this website in uh, the assignment. It's because it's basically about teens and drug abuse and you choose your path. It's, it's one of those videos where you watch it and then at the end of the video, you get to choose A or B. And then depending on what you choose, you see another video. And I'm not even sure when these were filmed. It had to have been like, uh, does it even say? I don't even know. Anyway, um, this is the one that we usually do. This is a new one, the big test. So I'm kind of like, I started playing around with this one earlier and I was like, ooh, that's interesting. But this one we always do in class together and it's usually a lot of fun because everybody will be like, no, 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 choose this path. No, no, no. Now let's go back and do it again and choose a different path. And we just have a good time. But in all seriousness, it, it shows you it's it's cheesy. It was filmed by a bunch of high school students, so they're not professional actors. Um, it was filmed clearly at least over 10 years ago because they still have like uh, flip phones or like anyway, like pretty, pretty um, old phone technology. But it is high school students. And I'm going to show you through I'm going to get you through like just the beginning of this one. And then I'm going to link you, it to you and, and have you guys play around with this. And this would be something fun that we could um, talk about in the Zoom call, and I might even be able to play them in the Zoom call and share my screen, and we can actually talk about it. It'd be kind of fun. So, um, okay, so I'm going to make this big, and we're going to do the choose your, oh wait, go away, choose your path. Okay, well, let's see if I can, I don't want to make this volume too loud. Okay, so what happens when you take prescription drug drugs that are not prescribed for you? Let me... Hey, beautiful, want to chill this weekend? Oh my god, did you see that? He just asked her out. Didn't he break up with Carla like two seconds ago? Okay, so then you get to choose. Do we tell Mario yes, we'll go out with him, or do we tell Mario no? So everybody always wants to choose the tell Mario yes. It used to just be the blue boxes over here, but now it actually links directly to the next video, so that's fine. So you get to the next video, it opens a new screen, and you'll have to... I'm sitting outside, I don't think I have the best... Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, text me later. I can't believe she's going out with him. What a backstabber. Oh my god. Hang on. I should have tried to go to full screen. I'm gonna have to run inside. I'm not getting a good connection. Um, okay, here we go. She's serious? I can't wait till Carla finds out about this. She's gonna flip. Okay, so then you tell Carla you're going out with Mario, and you got to give it a second to load the little video links. Um, this is, there it is. Tell Carla, or you don't tell her, 
and you know you have to decide which one you want to choose and there's basically i'm gonna escape out of this because i'm gonna ruin too much of it for you guys so basically you get to choose the path and find the different things that will happen and then you can always go back and start over sorry there's a gnat around me i shouldn't have done this outside i'm gonna run back inside the house because my signal's not very bad here anyway um so i want you to kind of play around well then um because basically it gets to a point where um she's so stressed out from the situation that she is offered drugs and you have to decide whether or not you will take the drugs or not okay so like if i yeah i'm gonna get out of this really quick the link you yeah that'd be cool. um text me later i can't believe she's going out what a backstabber. Oh my god, is she serious? I can't wait till Carla finds out about this. She's gonna flip. Okay, so then you decide here which way you're gonna go. You gotta kind of let it play out. You see the red bar, and once it plays out, then the two videos will link right there. So then you pick what you want, what you want to choose. And then you can always go back and choose. So this one is definitely there's a lot of different paths. I think there's at least four or five different ways you can end it. And um, anyway, it's kind of fun. So check it out. Um, but really, ultimately, what ends up happening is um, the carrier character gets offered drugs because she's so stressed out and she just takes a pill from someone who doesn't even really know what it is. And in this one, the person is um, having to stay up all night to study for a test and decides to uh, possibly take some drugs to help stay awake. So um, it's it's cheesy, but the but the point behind it is it's really dangerous to take drugs that are not prescribed to you. So these are more specifically about prescription drugs, but they could be illegal drugs because there's a lot of prescription drug abuse. So anyway, this is a pretty fun activity that we like to do. I shouldn't say fun. It's just kind of humorous because the acting is so terrible, but anyway, okay, I'm off my tangent on that. So the last thing we need to talk about are these case studies. So the last questions that you have left to answer on your uh, notes that you were typing in. Remember, I graded them all and I turned them back into you. So you have to go back into your assignments and look at the things that have been returned to you. And then you should be able to open the document again and type in the last of the case studies. Um, if you're having technical difficulties, I know it's really easy to text me and I'm not that good at it, at, at least from the student side. So just email that Allie Malden at Grace Prep. She gets back to you really, really quick and she's like a pro at this. So if you're like, I turned in something to a teacher and then she returned it to me and I need to get to that document again and I can't figure it out, just email her and she'll help you. But anyway, okay, so these last couple of case studies, um, some of you already worked ahead this one is, remember, it always starts with like a really old case study because it's usually one of the first um, where toxicology, where that content was used. So Mary Ansel, an English housemaid, poisoned her sister Caroline to obtain an insurance settlement. Mary sent Caroline a cake tainted with phosphorus. Caroline died eating after eating the poison cake. Evidence of Mary's recent purchases of phosphorus and a life insurance policy with her sister's name were provide, provided at her trial and then she was convicted and executed. So literally just the fact that she had some kind of proof of receipt that she bought the phosphorus and um, that she had this life insurance policy on her sister was enough. So obviously that wouldn't be enough today, but in 1899 it was. So this was probably one of those beginning cases. So in your questions, it just says, read the case study on page 294, Mary Ansel, summarize the case. So you just need to put in your own words. It was a case where one sister poisoned another sister using uh, phosphorus and um, she was found guilty and executed. The evidence was, you know, um, evidence that she had purchased the phosphorus and had a life insurance policy. So just summarize it in your own words so that when you have to cite a case study, you have a good summary there. The radium poisoning, we already talked about the radium girls quite a bit and we watched, I don't know if you guys watched that clip um, uh, that I had linked to the video. You can Google all kinds of stuff about the radium girls. It's actually really interesting. But um, the initial initially radium had been shown to have therapeutic importance in shrinking tumors and it was used in like body lotions and health drinks but in smaller doses um 
And the U.S. Radium Corporation opened that factory in New Jersey in 1917 to produce radium-based products. This was during World War One. There was a watch that, you know, they needed a watch that the soldiers could, you know, see at night. So it was all that crazy stuff. Um, and then if you go on to the next page, oops, don't fail me now. And then remember we talked about the women in the factory were using little paint brushes. They were dipping it in the radium and painting and then they would put the brush in their mouth between every time just to make the pointy make it pointy anyway so they're literally ingesting hundreds of times a day radium which is a lot more than just putting it in lotion and at the time it was it was a newly discovered you know thing and they just thought it was this miracle drug but it turned out radium's bad for you so be sure you read through this talk about um, what, 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 summarize what really happened and um, as best as you can. And uh, what was the, actually lots of women died from it. Their bones started decaying, their teeth were falling out, their jaws were breaking, they were dying. And um, yeah, um, basically by 1924, nine previously healthy women in their twenties were dead and their bodies were exhumed after five years and still showed presence of radium. And the company did not stop hand painting watches till 1947. They kept doing it for like 30 years. Kind of crazy. Okay. Markov, Georgie, Georgie Markov and Vladimir Kostov. We, I already talked about this case several times. When we were going through the slides, these were the guys that were poisoned with the rice and pellet through like the umbrella with the needle on the end of it. So read through that and give yourself a good little summary. This one I haven't talked about. This one's actually kind of interesting. It's because I remember that I was in high school when this happened. This was in 1982 and extra strength Tylenol capsules were laced with cyanide and they killed like seven people. Basically, the person responsible were never caught. It was believed that cyanide was added to the Tylenol and that the tainted bottles were placed on shelves of several supermarkets and pharmacies in the Chicago area. In addition to the five bottles responsible for the seven deaths, three poison bottles were found on the shelves. Because they were from different production locations, investigators believe that the tampering occurred after the product was shipped rather than in the factory. This was the first documented example of random drug poisoning. A $100,000 reward posted by the drug manufacturer Johnson & Johnson network was never claimed. It led to the development of tamper-resistant packaging and caplets. So you know all that tamper-resistant packaging that didn't used to be on there. Because literally somebody, I don't know who, they never solved it, bought a bunch of Tylenol from the shelves and they know it was post-production because they came from different production um, samples. Uh, different locations. Um, anyway, and someone put cyanide in them and then like put them back on the grocery shelves. Crazy, I know. And then people bought them and ate and took them and died. So it's really kind of insane. Um, and then in 1986, Stella Nicola, Seattle woman, laced some Excedrin with cyanide and killed her husband for his life insurance. She placed three other poison bottles of Excedrin in the store to make it look like a random killing, to make it look like the Tylenol thing. And she ended up killing some other woman. Um, her name was Susan Snow, the woman that died. So in 1988, Nickel was sentenced to 99 years in prison. So she's basically like, hey, somebody put Tylenol, cyanide and Tylenol a couple years ago. I'm gonna do the same thing with Excedrin and then kill my husband and make it look like there's some other crazy person on the loose which she was a crazy person on the loose. So anyway, um, these were really crazy because I actually remember when that was happening, people were afraid to go to the store and buy Tylenol because you didn't know if it was going to be laced with cyanide. So the next time you're having a hard time opening a package of, um, you know, whatever, Tylenol or aspirin or whatever, and just think of it's there to protect you so you don't get poisoned with cyanide. Um, so pretty much that's the last of it. These, after you have summarized these four cases, you may officially submit this to me um, under the assignment, turn it in again, um, and then I will grade them and return them back to you one last time. Okay, so um, let's see, choose your path. Um, basically, this is just summarizing and then we'll talk about all of this during the Zoom meeting. So I encourage you to pay attention to the reminds I send on um, tomorrow, well, Wednesday, sorry. I'm making this on Tuesday. Pay attention to the reminds I send on Wednesday. It'll be Thursday afternoon and then Tuesday afternoon. So you have options. I'll set up a couple of different times and you can call in and we can just kind of 
ask questions, summarize a chapter, or talk about any of the case studies you thought were interesting, ask me any questions that you would have asked had we been in class. Um, Cause I hate not being able to discuss the stuff with you guys. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for today. Just finish up the case studies, turn them in, uh, link to the um, choose your path and have a little bit of fun with that. And um, yeah, and then please, please attend one of the uh, review and summary sessions on Thursday or Tuesday or books if you want. I'll, I'll list several times so that we can break it up by class. So, all right, that's all I've got for you today. Have a beautiful Wednesday Have a, and hopefully I'll see you guys Thursday or Tuesday. If I don't see you Tuesday, Thursday, have a good evening.